Hey, what's going on? Uh, this is another episode of The Way I See It, and um, thanks for joining in. Um, right now, I'm using my iPhone 8 Plus, and I'm actually going ahead and talking to you using the microphone that I have connected to my shirt. I'm not using this, I'm just holding this on top of my head right now, on top of my neck, my shoulders. I'm um, just going to go ahead and just talk a little bit about um, this book today. And uh, Algorithms to Live By. And um, this book is basically on the computer science to human decisions by Brian Christian and Tom Griffin. It's a really great book. Um, I started out with the uh, audio book and then I had to go buy the Kindle app because I wanted to pull out some of the things that the book was saying. And um, one of the things I like about utilizing ebooks or Kindle books is that you can search the book for information and you can share it immediately. Um, the thing about the book is that you can't have to kind of type everything else out and you have to look like visually, like manually look through the book. And one of the things I like about this book is that it talks about, you know, how the algorithms and how we, we use algorithms in our lives whether we like it or not. And they discuss some, um, you know, popular algorithms like the 30% uh, rule, which is basically used for the secretary problem. Um, look, the look then leap rule, you know, he talks about sorting and how sorting and searching is very important in computer science. And I, I, I basically, as a student of student computer science and um, as a developer in my own life, it, it just resonates with me because of the fact that you get an idea to understand that um, <laughs> this book is actually something I wish I would have had before I started my first computer science class. And uh, the reason why I say that is because of the fact that it gets me ready. It it it, it helps. It, it sets my mind up for what is why we do all the things we do. And um, after you know, most of the time when I hear those types of, types of things in school, you would be presented with you know, a, uh, an introduction to the algorithm and then a whole bunch of different proofs. And then you would have like code that would help you to, you know, get the work done. And I felt that um, the only people that would be really motivated to do that would be people who already know what they're gonna use their um, applications for or their, their coursework for. Now, um, going back to the book was that this is a great way to actually get people to buy a book about programming and about algorithms pretty much and um, how they affect your lives day to day. So you can talk about um, one thing that he they talked about um, was, let me go to that page really, getting things done, you know, do the difficult things while they are easy and do the great things while they are small, about to. And he talks about how we take um, the shortest processing time and how um, different things can be done with a little bit of effort. Um, he also talks about um, choosing your problems. Um, also, um, one thing I also uh, brought up without going too much into the book, because it's only a five minute um, talk, it's supposed to be, it's been like 10 minutes, but I'm trying to find a way to address this with you. And one of the things I wanted to talk about was the, um, the, the uh, smallest, oops, let me go there real quick. Yeah, the uh, stop, the the, uh, the when to park rule. And it talks about that you need to find, you know, when you're looking for a parking space, how long do you continue to look for a parking space before you actually go ahead and stop and just park wherever you are. And, um, it, it brings up a nice um, like a grid that basically talks, like, that shows you like you know how much time you know based on how much occupancy they are you know and, and that becomes the most optimal and also talks about when to quit you know for instance quitting your job you know or just quitting anything you know and also uh, when it comes down to gathering information um, how long do you explore an opportunity before you start to exploit something. You know, it goes on very long in terms, and like I know everybody may not have the time to read this book, 
but you might have time to listen to the audiobook. The audiobook is on audible.com, but you can also go ahead and, you know, see if you can find um, clips from reviews that people have put, and you can start there before you read it. Um, if you want me to send some things, ask me questions, I can probably try to find some way to address this to you. But um, I, I wanted to basically make this talk, this talk, because I will be talking about something else. I'm going to make a two-part clip today. And um, it's just about understanding that um, certain things in books are, are good to read, and this is probably something that you can. Um, it won't be. It's, it, it wasn't. It was not boring for me. So I don't know if it may be boring for you, but if you're interested, if you're a person that's interested in um, understanding how to think and how to how to solve problems, this book is for you. And um, if you're a person that is. A little bit, if you, if, you, if you read the book, um, Charles Duhigg, The Power of Habit, this probably is a book, good book for you as well. Because um, this book is actually, you know, talked a little bit about how the mind works when you're trying to solve problems. And um, yeah, so, oh, also, um, this, uh, this, this talk is also going to be talked about in probably further podcasts that I have. I have a podcast that's called Yamanote tech and society podcast it's basically a podcast about tech and society um it has a you know it talks about things that are going on in you know cultures like you know japanese culture and um you know american culture but the uh the term for yamanote just comes from the book i mean from the train the yamanote sen and it's basically a very popular train it's a loop and it basically allows you to get like anywhere in tokyo pretty much and it, I think it takes almost like an hour and a half to get around to go an entire loop. But if you're ever lost in, in Japan, like taking certain trains, you can always guarantee that you will be able to get back to your closest point, whether no matter where you are on that train, you know. And, I, and one thing I like about it is that um, uh, when you're trying to wander around looking looking for things to do in Japan, you know, sometimes you just want to just wander. You can definitely avoid um, gain that with Yamanote Sen. And my podcast is it's about no matter where you are in your life, you'll be able to get on this train or this podcast and find information that will help you along your way. Because that's what I'm basically doing, collecting information that will help people along their way no matter where they are in their life. Whether you're, you know, 15 years old or 150, you know, you really have to understand that. Uh, well, what I really understood is that and I need to share people. I need to share information to the people that want it. So, anyway, that's it for today. Um, join me next time um, on another, you know, topic. I will be going through a whole bunch of topics, and uh, talk to you guys uh, in the next episode of the way I see it. Matane.